and welcome back to Bookish Theories. Today we reunite with Tomorrow by Together in their never-ending quest to make me cry with their music and lore. The promotion of Miniso 3 Tomorrow starts strong with a touching trailer directed by Yu Kuang Gong. In the past couple of years, this man has been carrying K-pop storylines on his back with his insane visual storytelling, and this time is no different. Coming through with a new concept inspired by the Little Prince, he and Tomorrow by Together join forces to show us what would have happened if the Little Prince decided to stay on Earth instead of going back to his planet. Now, even if this new adaptation that story was written by the director, it's pretty obvious that it very much fits Tomorrow by Together's main concept up to this point. So far we know that Miniso 3 will tell a story of finding courage and purpose in the midst of uncertainty. A new press release also revealed that the main theme of the trailer is to remember the forgotten promise that they made together with you, so if anybody was wondering, yes, the fox in the video is 100% a symbol of MOA, like the star was back in other videos. After experiencing the free fall of youth in their previous album, now the boys are selling into the new reality of adults but they still miss that spark that they experienced when they were younger. Now they're trying to figure out their place in the world, but the only way they can do so is to remember the promise they made to their precious fox, which at the end of the day is what truly matters. In the story, the fox is called Tomorrow, and Tomorrow is frozen in time until the boys remember their promise. This means that to find their future purpose, they must first remember the past and literally save Tomorrow by acting together. In order to do so, however, they must first reconnect with their more magical childhood self, and this is where the little Prince comes into play. For those of you who don't know, this is the story of an aviator that crashes in the desert and meets the little prince, a child that comes from a distant planet looking for a way to go back home to his rose. In the brief time they spend together, the aviator learns many important lessons from the little prince, and his pure and genuine approach to life helps him reconnect with his inner child which he had to repress to be around grown-ups. As they explain in the trailer, the boys play the role of five princes that come from planet B612, which is the name of the asteroid the little prince lives on in the book, and yet when they eventually grow up in the real world, their struggles become more similar to those of the aviator rather than the little prince, because in his story the little prince never gets to grow old. He is like a Peter Pan figure, if you will, forever young and forever full of that childlike wonder, but as we saw back in the name chapter, our little princess rejected the eternity for the sake of reality. The catch of living the Neverland, however, is to slowly forget that magic, which is exactly what they have to fight against in the trailer. On the first page of the little prince, the author explains that all grown-ups were once children, but only few of them remember it. When people grow up, they tend to forget the most important things. They become concerned with power, vanity, money, work, but they forget that what is essential is invisible to the eye. In the 2015 adaptation, the aviator says that growing up isn't the problem, forgetting is. And in a similar way, the trailer portrays the boys' mission to find their purpose as a quest to reconnect with their more innocent past. At the beginning, the video opens with a shot of a house after buried in the desert. All of a sudden, five princes dressed in white emerge from the building, and as they look around, they see nothing but a sandy landscape. In the original story, the little prince actually travels using birds, but in the trailer we see that our five crashed on earth with a house. To me, this is a reference to the flying house from the name chapter trailer, but many people also notice the similarity with the house from Cat and Dog, which, given the animal theme, is actually extremely fitting to the concept. Either way, after landing in the desert, the boys are approached by Tomorrow, the fennec fox, and this is the beginning of a beautiful bond. You see, in the book, the little prince lands on Earth to meet people and understand things. His friendship with the aviator is the main focus because he is the narrator of the story, but the character of the fox is arguably just as important. The fox is the first friend the little prince ever makes on Earth, and it's the fox that teaches him the meaningful truths of the world. When it first approaches the little prince, the fox doesn't want to play with him because it hasn't been tamed, meaning that the two of them have yet to establish a bond. They are strangers, they don't need each other, but if the little prince comes back every day, and every day he gets a little bit closer, the fox will slowly get used to his presence, learn to trust him, and eventually be tamed. At that point, they will become unique in each other's eyes, they will start needing each other, so the fox teaches him that a relationship worth having is the result of patience, hard work, and dedication. It's the time that you spend on something that makes it special, so the fox teaches this lesson to the little prince by allowing itself to be tamed. The video portrays this event taking place. As the five princes discover the desert, the fox approaches them and teaches them to create this bond, and in a direct reference to the book, it tells them that if they come every day at four, it begins to be happy from three. Since the fox has been tamed, it learned to rely on this routine. It knows that every day at four they will come, and it will be so happy about it that it begins to feel joy an hour earlier. If you think about tomorrow by together, this is also true when it comes to their relationship with Moa. You allow them into your life, you taught them how to create this bond with you, and every time that they come back, you are happy even before they 
do, even now they come back at 4, meaning in April, but more are already happy at 3, in March, because you are already anticipating this reunion. If you think about the lore, the idea of always coming back at 4 can also be seen as the promise they made with each other and the star back in the dream chapter. Back in Up of a Star, their promise was to always come back even if they got separated, problem is that growing up they forgot that promise, and in that video it took them a long time to eventually remember. Despite their promise, life got in the way, and the same thing is about to happen to the five little princes. As they spend happy times with the fox, a giant looming shadow with red eyes appears out of nowhere, and before we know it, the boys are now in a cafe being interrogated by a detective. Now this entity here can be seen as the world of the grown-ups catching up to them. The innocent princess perceive the reality of adulthood as a menacing threat, a monster even, that is coming to destroy the peaceful life that they share with the fox. In the book, the little prince initially wants to meet the grown-ups, but the fox advises against it. Men are hunters, they cannot be trusted, they have forgotten the important things, and to the fox they are nothing more than disturbing predators. On another note, I also think that this scene is also meant to parallel the odd cat looming over Yonjun in Napova Star. We are talking about two different kinds of evil here, but I also think that there's a parallel to be made between the things that one might fear as a child versus the things that scare you on the verge of adulthood. Back at the cafe, on the other hand, the detective is asking them the truth about tomorrow. Now adults and fully integrated into the world, the princes do exactly that, they tell him the truth, but the detective still doesn't believe them. Like in the book, grown-ups never understand important things, and not even when they're right in front of them. They only care about serious stuff, like money and rules and figures, but they never understand the truth even if you tell them. And speaking of speaking, there is also a couple of scenes where Taeyeon is seen talking, but no words can be heard. I circle back to this in a second because I have a theory about that, but before I get to it, I need to talk about a few more things. Now, we said that at this point, the little princess decided to stay in reality and grow up. They found regular jobs, they lead normal lives, but they're still drawn to the magical past still lingering inside of them, and yet when they sneak into the museum to go see the fox, something is still off. The sight of the animal arises feelings of longing in them, but even if Yeonjun has the answer right in his hands, they still cannot remember the memories they shared together. They became adults and forgot like everybody else, and the more time passes, the more reality takes over. In the next scene, for instance, we hear a beautiful new rendition of Dreamer, but as they dance in their magic island, the scenery is so sad it's almost beautiful. Gone are the bright colors, the magic, the happiness. Now everything is dull, the trees are dead, the grass is dead, there's no animals, there's no flowers, no nothing. The boys are still playing like they used to, but the energy is no longer there. It's almost as if they're forcing themselves to keep on trying, but as the lyrics of Dreamer suggest, after leaving Neverland, the dream they had has become more difficult to realize. In this scene, we also see Subi, Yeonjun, and Kai playing their own version of musical chairs while Bangyu watches the sunset. I say that this is the sunset because the lighting is a bit warmer here, not to mention that the boys used to go to their magic island during Blue Hour. The time of happiness, however, has now seemingly become a time of nostalgia, and this might also be a reference to the book. In the story, the little prince watches the sunset when he's sad. One time, he was so sad that he watched the sunset 44 times in one day, moving his little chair back and forth to catch it on his little planet. The game of musical chairs recalls this constant movement, and Bongyu's outfit seems to reference many of the illustrations of the little prince. Like we saw in Blue Hour, the time of day that was once a time of happiness has now become a time of sadness. In the new version of Dreamer, moreover, Bongyu sings about the hopeless reality of adulthood, and Yeonjun calls to the stars and the dreamers, but the lyrics stop there. They no longer sing that they are dreamers with memories of stars, because they aren't. By the time the music cuts off, the color has disappeared completely from their magic island, and they move on in a reality that is now completely black and white. Bear in mind, when their world turns grey is never a good sign. Back in Cat and Dog, you were the one putting colour in their monochrome reality. In the you version of Freeze, their world turned back to grey because you didn't go to the date. And in Good Boy Gone Bad, they bled monochrome diamonds because you left and took away the colour in their life. All these examples tell us that you are the one in charge of colouring their world, and in the video, this you is symbolised by the fox. As they forget about their tomorrow, they forget forget about their purpose, and because of that, their world turns grey and colourless. In the next scene, this is also symbolised by Yeonjun removing his crown while looking at his reflection in the mirror. At this point of the video, the boys are forgetting who they are, they're forgetting their crown, they're even forgetting the one who turned their horns into a crown, which is you, the fox. The dirty reflection also hints at their loss of clarity and identity. Hyuninkai even removes his eye patch at this point, and like with Taeyeon's voice, I'll come back to this in a second. In the story time passes, and the little princess gradually become more and more like the grown-ups the fox used to warn them against. All of a sudden, however, we see Yeonjun hanging out in Magic Island, and while he's seemingly having a dream, he finally remembers the 
the promise and the fox. This finally leads the little princess to come together and go save tomorrow. They head to the museum, break the glass, steal the fox and run away. As Yeonjun escapes with tomorrow, the detective starts hunting them down, once again proving that the fox in the book was right. Men are hunters, they chase, but in turn Yeonjun is chasing that feeling. If you look closely, their act of courage already allowed a little bit of magic to come back into their life, so they won't give up this time. As the detective chases Yeonjun, the others already have a plan to bring tomorrow to safety. Subin is writing a Vespa similar to the one Yeonjun is driving, so at the right moment he comes in as a decoy to distract the detective. When he realizes that he's following Subin instead of Yeonjun, it's already too late, because at that point Bong Yu, Taeyeon and Kai cut him off at a crossroads and run off on foot. The plan seems to have been successful, but as they run away, the stuffed fox is no longer with Yeonjun. It has disappeared, and when he finally realizes it, he is overcome by grief. In a touching pile with Nap of a star, the others surround him to give him comfort, and like in Nap of a star, this is the moment that Yu finally comes back. Back then, the star fell asleep the moment they started to grow up, but he woke up once again when they remembered the promise they made as children. In the same way, their tomorrow was frozen in time until the moment they remembered their promise and finally honored it by taking action. In their touching reunion, the fox is so happy to see them again. It never stopped waiting for them, and this right here is a message that is so important to understand, so listen up right now. In the story like in real life, tomorrow is always waiting for you, but you must be brave enough to take action in order to free it. The fate of your tomorrow is in your hands. In a life filled with uncertainty, reality can be overwhelming and scary. It's difficult not to lose yourself, it takes effort to find your purpose, and it takes even more courage to work on it after you find it. As the fox taught the little prince, however, it's the time that you spend on your rose that makes the rose so important. Anything that matters takes effort, time and dedication, from the relationships that you built to the dreams that you want to accomplish, so it's up to you to honor the promises that you make to yourself. In the book, the fox teaches that you are responsible forever for what you tame, so by freeing tomorrow, the little princes honor their responsibility and finally remember who they are. They forgot their purpose once, but they won't forget it ever again, and sure enough, at this point we see that the princes finally got their crowns back. On a side note, some people think that Kai doesn't have it, but let me clarify this, he absolutely does. You can't really see it because of the light in the background and the camera angle, but it's right there. They all got their crowns back because they saved tomorrow together, and sure enough, at exactly 5.53 in the video, the boys start to run away. Back in Up of a Star, them reuniting with the star also overlapped with the return of magic in their life, and the same thing is happening now with the fox. Saving tomorrow together, moreover, was also the main theme of the Star Seekers, and when it comes to the lore, some connections can also be made with other details of the story. I told you I had some theories about Kai's eye patch and Taeyeon's voice, and I actually think it has something to do with the Morse codes they were associated with since the very beginning. Before their debut, each of them had a Morse code spelling a specific word. Subin had tomorrow, fittingly enough, Yeonjun had promise, while Bongyu had hope. Taeyeon instead had clue, while Hyun and Kai had secret. Years later, these words ended up being connected with their true names in the Star Seekers, which reveals their true destiny and purpose, so it fits the concept of the trailer. Today I have no intention of going down the Star Seekers rabbit hole, otherwise we'd be here until next year, but they did use Morse code in the logo teaser, so is this enough for me to connect it to the trailer? Absolutely, let's take a look. Starting off with Subin, his Morse code is literally the name of the album, which right off the bat is telling us something. Most importantly, however, in the video is the first one to tame the fox, meaning that he approaches tomorrow first. In the lore is the oracle of the group, he literally sees the future before anyone else does, so I find it very curious that in the trailer he's the first person to interact with tomorrow. Yeonjun's word instead is promise, and this is a very easy one to fit. Not only remembering the promise is the main theme of the trailer, but in the museum he's the one holding the promise in his hands, and he's also the first one to remember it on Magic Island. Moving on to Bongyu we have hope, and this is admittedly a bit up for interpretation. I'd say that if Bongyu embodies hope, then his role might symbolize the ups and downs related to this feeling. During the storm in the desert, Bongyu wraps the scarf around Yeonjun and tomorrow, so even if the situation is grim, hope is still strong because they're all together. When they're on Magic Island without memory of tomorrow, however, they're kind of losing hope, so you have Bongyu singing the lines of them hopelessly walking through the maze of life. With Taeyeon instead we have Clue, and I think that this might explain why he speaks, but his voice isn't heard. In the lore, Taeyeon is always the one trying to collect all the clues to fix the situation and save everyone. His intuition and intelligence are his main qualities, but he often keeps things to himself. He observes, he learns, but he does so in silence. When he's talking to the fox, and full credit to Sweet Peach TXT for the translation, he's seemingly saying, I guess I didn't know anything back then, which could actually refer to what the fox just taught him about 
about taming. In the book, the fox tells the little prince a huge secret, and Taeyeon is the one receiving the first clue about it. The real holder of the secret, however, is Hyunin Kai, who is the one that Taeyeon talks to the second time we cannot hear him. Now, Hyunin Kai being the visual embodiment of the secret really makes sense to me, because in the video we see him wearing the heart eye patch. I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw the teaser I thought it might have been a reference to Freeze, but after watching the video I don't think that this is the case. Back then, that was a callback to the Snow Queen, which was the children's story that inspired that album. In the Snow Queen, a boy named Kai is hit in the eye by the shards of a cursed mirror that keeps him from seeing beauty in the world, so you can see how that would fit the chaos chapter. Since in the trailer Kai lands on Earth already with the eye patch and only removes it when he's confronting the detective, however, I actually think that this time it might have a completely different meaning, and that this meaning is related to the secret. In the book, the secret of the fox is that it is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. In the video, Kai visually embodies this secret because his eye is covered by a heart, which is what the fox tells them to use to see what's truly important. Seeing with the heart means to pay attention to what matters instead of material things. It means to see the world through the eyes of love and compassion, which is something that grown-ups always forget to do. This might also be the reason why Kai doesn't wear the eye patch when he's talking to the detective, but also why he removes it after Yeonjun takes off his crown. As we said at the beginning, the problem is not growing up, the problem is forgetting, and at the lowest of the law, all of them kind of forget their purpose. They forgot tomorrow, they forgot the promise, they forgot to have hope, they forgot the clue, and they also forgot the secret. At the end, they managed to remember all of that, which is what allows them to regain their crowns, but to see how the story will continue, for now we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this trailer, what are your theories about tomorrow, and most importantly, how many times you cried while watching it. If you enjoyed this video, please think about liking and subscribing, and as always, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye!